In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this procedural peppermint candy material in Blender. Now, if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, you can purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, and that is a great way to help support me. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, or if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, then you can check out the procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube. All the links are in the description. And then before we start, I wanted to thank this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. Sketchfab is an awesome 3D model site where you can preview 3D models in your browser. You can even view them on a phone, tablet, or in AR and VR. They also have a huge 3D model store where you can purchase models and assets. You can even apply to sell your own models on the platform. Check out Sketchfab with the link in the description. All right, so real quick, I'm gonna show you how I've set this up in the 3D space. So what I did is I pressed Shift A and I just added a plane and I just moved the plane over just so that I can preview the final material on a plane. And then also I can press Shift A and I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna add an Icosphere. And then right behind me, if you open up the Add Icosphere settings, I turn these subdivisions up to five so that it's pretty subdivided. And then I just shaded it smooth just so that we can preview the material on a sphere. And then also because this is a peppermint candy material, I thought I'd model just a base basic peppermint candy. So to do that, I'll press shift A and I'm going to add a circle and then I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'll just press F to fill a face. Then I can press G to grab and Z to bring it up on the Z axis. And then I can press E to extrude and I'm going to extrude it down on the Z axis. And then what you can do is you can press control B and control B is going to add a bevel and you can scroll your mouse wheel up to add more cuts and then just click to place that. And then I can also hold down the alt key and select this ring of vertices and I can do the same thing. So I'll just press control B and then just scroll your mouse wheel to make those cuts just like that. And then I'll just shade this smooth. And then also right over here on the modifier properties, just to subdivide this, I'm going to click on add modifier and I'm going to add the subdivision surface with the render and viewport to one, just so that it's kind of smooth. And then for the lighting right over here on the world, I added in this machine shop 02 1k HDR, and this is from polyhaven.com. So if you'd like to use the same HDRI, I'll have the links in the description. So I'm just going to click on new here and I'm just going to call this procedural peppermint candy. And then what I can do is I can click and drag and I can drop this material on these different objects. And that way the same material will be on all three objects. And then in this tutorial, I will also be using the node wrangler add on. So if you don't have that enabled, you can just go right up here to edit and open up the preferences. And then if you click right over here on add ons over here on the search, you can type in a node and then just check mark the node wrangler add on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So to start off, I want to create that red and white stripe texture. So to do that, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a gradient texture and I'll just drop this down here. And then using the node wrangler, I can control shift and click on nodes to preview it. And then I don't want this to be set to linear. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to change it to radial. And then also using the other node wrangler feature, I'm just going to select this and I'll press control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I want to use the object coordinates not generated. So I'm going to plug object into the vector here on the mapping. And now you can see that we we have one of those stripes in our texture. Now one stripe isn't what we want. We want to have a bunch of stripes and we want all the stripes to be going around the object. So to do that, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a math node and let's just drop the math node right here. So now what I can do is I can click on the add and I'm going to change it to fraction. So it's right down here under rounding. If you go down here, it's fraction. So I'm going to turn this to fraction, but you can see that we still don't have any more stripes. So to create more stripes, I'm going to click on the fraction and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it down here. And then instead of this being set to fraction, I want to click on the fraction right here and I'm going to change it to multiply. So it's right here under functions, just change it to multiply. So now if you turn this value up, it's going to duplicate that and spin it around. And whatever number you set this to, that is how many stripes there's going to be. So for something like this, I think a 13 looks pretty good. So I'm going to change the value to 13. And now there are 13 of those stripes. Now with peppermint candy, they're usually is a bit of a swirl because right now the stripes are just straight and they're just going straight into the center, but they're not swirling. So to make it swirl, 
I want to bring the texture coordinate over here. And then I want to click on this gradient texture and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it. And I want to drop it down here and then I can control shift and click on it to preview it. So to make the stripes spin around, I want to affect this rotation value so that the stripes are rotated. So I'm going to take the color right here on this gradient texture and I'm going to plug that into rotation. And then if I control shift and click back on the fraction, you can see it is doing something, but that's not really what I want. So if I go back over here to this gradient texture, I want to change it from radial to spherical. And then if I control shift and click on this, you can see what it's doing. So now the gradient texture is a sphere. The problem with this is that it's moved over sideways. And so if I control shift and click back on the fraction, you can see this is all warped and it's not rotating in the correct spot. So to fix that, I'm going to take the object right here and I'm going to plug that into the vector on the gradient texture. And now if you control shift and click on the gradient texture, you can see that that sphere is in the center. So just control shift and click back on the fraction and you can see now it's rotating in the right spot. But there still are a few more problems because you can see right here, this is kind of offset. If I select this object and tab into edit mode, I can press G to grab and Z on the Z axis. And you can see when I bring it up and down on the Z axis, it's actually changing. And that is because this gradient texture changes depending on where the object is in the 3D space. If I control shift and click on the gradient texture and then move it up and down, you can see that it starts to get brighter. And then as you bring it up, it gets darker. So what I want to do is I want to only use the Z values. So I'm going to control shift and click back on the fraction. So I only want to use the Z values of the gradient texture. So what I'm going to do is press shift A and I'm going to search for a combine XYZ. So I'm going to take the combine XYZ and I'm going to stick it right here. And then I want to take this color and I want to put that into the Z. So now that I've done that, you can see that it's rotating quite nicely and the rotation is in the very center of all these objects. Now I do want to be able to control how much it's rotating. So to control that, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for another math node. And I want to drop the math node right in here. And then I don't want it to be set to add. I want to click on this and right up here under functions, I want to change it to a multiply. So now if you change this value right here on the multiply, that is going to determine how rotated the stripes are. And then right over here on the sphere, you can see that it's not actually being rotated. And that is because this sphere is flat. If I tab into edit mode on the sphere and then scale it on the Z axis, as I start to scale it down and as it gets more and more flat, you can see that it's starting to be more of a swirl. So at the end of this tutorial, I will show you how to fix this. I'll show you how to change it so that even when this sphere is rotated and it's not flat, it'll still have the swirls. So on this multiply here, I'm going to change it to a value of two because I think that looks pretty good. I don't want to overdo it. I just want to change it to a value of two. All right. So we now have a really nice stripe texture. So what I want to do now is I want to plug this value right in here into the base color on the principal, and then I can control shift and click on the principal. So now what I want to do is I want to change the colors and then that way it'll look more like a peppermint candy. So to change the colors, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp node and let's just drop the color ramp node right in here. So I'm first going to click on the black tab and I'm going to click on the minus to get rid of it. And then I'm going to hold down my control key and click right in here and that is going to add another tab and I want to push the tab over so that we have white and white on either side. So now I want to create a red one in the middle. So right about here in the middle, I'm going to hold down the control key and click to add another tab, just kind of put it in the middle here. And then I can click on this color down here and I'm going to make it a bright red color. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, you can click over on the hex value and you can type in a hex value of E3. 0005. So that's looking pretty good, but it's not very sharp. It's quite smooth. And I also want to make the red stripe thicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to click to add another tab about here and then hold down my control key and click again to add another tab right here. And then both of these tabs, I want to make them a red color as well, but I want them to be just a little bit less saturated. And again, if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, um, right over here on the hex value, you can type in F. FF3B 
four, four. So that's the color that I will be using. And then right over here on this one, I'm going to use the same color. So now if you take a look at this, it's really starting to look like peppermint candy. Now I want to sharpen up the white values just a little bit. So I'm going to drag the white values out a little bit or drag them in, and I'm going to drag them closer to the red values. And now you can see that that white is a bit sharper. And then you can also play around with these values, just dragging them in or out. And that way it'll change the size of the red stripes. All right, so that is looking really cool, but I also want to play around with some other things in the material just to make it look a little bit more like candy. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to turn this roughness down to like a 0.2 because hard candy like this usually is pretty shiny. So I'll change the roughness to a 0.2. And then I also want to turn the subsurface up to a 0.3. And so the subsurface scattering is going to kind of let a little bit of light go through the hard candy. And then the subsurface color, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to make it kind of a reddish color but I don't want the subsurface color to be too bright, so just kind of a reddish orangey color and not super saturated. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using over here on the hex, you can type in a hex value of E7 for A37. All right, and then the last thing that I wanna to do to finish off this material is I just wanna give it a tiny little bit of bump just to make it look slightly more realistic and give it just a little bit of imperfection. So to do that, I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's just drop the noise texture right down here. And then I can press Control T with the noise texture selected and that'll add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I don't actually need the mapping, so I'll press X to delete it. And I'm going to plug the object up to the vector. So I can now Control Shift and click on the noise texture to preview it and I want to turn the detail all the way to the max which is 15 and then I'm going to turn the scale down to like a 2. So now we can use this value to kind of make the candy look slightly bumpy. So to do that I'm going to plug this factor right here up to the normal and then what I need to do is convert this to normal data because this is black and white data but this needs to be a normal data. So to convert it I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a bump node and let's drop the bump node right in here and then I want to plug the factor factor up to the height and that way it'll convert the black and white data to normal data. So if I control shift and click on that, you can see what it's doing. So I can now control shift and click on this and you can preview that material. Now it's really, really strong right now and that is way too strong. So to make it less strong, I'm going to turn the strength value to a 0 0.02 and that way it's very, very subtle. But if you kind of look right in here in the reflections, there's just a tiny little bit of bump and that just makes it look a little bit more realistic. And that is it for the peppermint candy material. Now, one more thing that I want to do is I want to create a separate material and I want to change the material so that this object has a swirl as well. Because if I tab in edit mode, I can scale this down and you can see that as it starts to get more and more flat, it starts to swirl. Um, but let me show you how to change this so that it'll work on a circular object. So what I first want to do is make it a separate material so it won't affect these materials. So I'm going to click on the sphere and then I'm going to click on this button right here to duplicate the material. Material. And I'm going to call this procedural peppermint candy 2. So now to change this so that it swirls, we need to go right over here and right here behind this gradient texture, I need to press shift A and I'm going to search for a mapping node. And I want to plug the mapping node right here. So the object is going into the vector of the mapping and then the vector from the mapping will go into the gradient texture. And then what I want to do is I want to flatten the Z values. So if you go right over here to the mapping, you can go right down here to the scale and on this Z value, I want to turn the Z scale to zero. And now when I change it to zero, you can see that it's now swirling all around that object. All right, and that is it. So that is the procedural peppermint candy material. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching. And again, if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, you can purchase the procedural material on my Gumroad store and my Patreon. I'll have the links in the description. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, or you can also check out my Blender procedural material playlist on YouTube if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials. So thank you for watching. Watching, and I hope to see you in a future tutorial.